Welcome to Chapter 6, The Birth of a Nation. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at our government, uh, how it got started, what were the problems, what were the solutions. And in our first lesson, we're going to be looking at the Articles of Confederation. This was a plan too weak to work. It was our first form of government, right here, the Articles of Confederation. And if we look at our uh, words to know, Confederation right here, a union of people, states, or nations that join together, often with some political power given to a central authority. Usually this means it's a weak central authority. Uh, we've been conditioned to think confederation, confederation, confederate, that's the South in the Civil War. Well, they get the word from somewhere. And the confederation is usually a loose assembly of countries or provinces that come together they give a little bit of power to a central government, but really the power resides with the countries or states that are joining together. It's like a very, very strong alliance. And that's what we have here in the Articles of Confederation. The states come together, they, uh, they vote on things. So New York would say, you know, yes, we want this. And Connecticut would say, no, we want that. And then they, you know, the 13 colonies, the 13 states would vote yes or no. And if they had more votes for the yes, then it would happen. Otherwise, it wouldn't. It was very simple, um, very weak government, where if you think about it, it makes sense because they're coming from a uh, British government with a strong central authority, and they didn't. the states didn't like that they were being pushed around by a strong central authority, so why would they make another one? So they simply just made the Articles of Confederation uh, so that they can join together and cooperate and um, make their own country. So in 1777, they declared that uh, soon after uh, independence was declared, the Articles of Confederation were officially adopted and the system was put in place throughout the entire war. Now what we should have in our notes is that the Articles of Confederation were good for two things. First, obviously, it helps win the Revolutionary War. Without it, uh, each state fights Great Britain on their own, and there's no coordination. So Articles Confederation helps there. Secondly, it set the ground rules. Right here we see, sets the ground rules for governing Northwest Territory, a region that included what would soon become the state of Ohio. We talked quite a bit about this in class, of how important the Ohio Valley is. And, you know, anyway, let me take a, let's take a quick look. Um, a recap at what's been going on. So we have the um, these claims. Remember we talked about that when they started colonizing, they just colonized this area and said, okay, we're going all the way as far as the eye can see west. So you see North Carolina goes here, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, okay? And then we get this map where the French come in and basically cut off any kind of westward movement uh, because they have claimed the Mississippi River Valley. And uh, we know the story of the French and Indian War, where now this territory becomes English, so anything east of the uh, Mississippi River becomes uh, the British. Here we have 13 colonies. So 13 colonies rebel, and after the war, we actually see that America gets this land here, um, Get this. Oops. Let me get this. Okay. A little bit too big here. Let me fix that. All right. So America gets this land here east of the Mississippi, not Canada, but all this land here. So what ends up happening, of course? Well, Virginia's going to say, hey, look, we got this land back. And, you know, North Carolina, hey, we're going to, you know, as far west as we can go in Georgia. So all this new territory that comes in that they considered was theirs and you know, not theirs, and, you know, the proclamation of 1763 uh, kind of puts a damper on it, but you could see here, Virginia starts claiming crazy stuff, like land up here, Massachusetts, I mean, Massachusetts is over here, and they're claiming land in New York, they're claiming land in Michigan, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and Virginia are, are claiming this land, and so it looks like the states might fight each other over these lands because if they don't start claiming lands west, they're going to get weaker or they're going to stay the same while all these other countries that have a western border are going to get stronger. And this is a really big problem. 
the Articles of Confederation sets it up so that we set up the Northwest Territories, we start organizing new states. Instead of saying, okay, here are the um, here are the states, you know, you can get this land and you can get Virginia, you can have this, and North Carolina, you can have that. And so they say, okay, we're going to cut off our, the western borders here. And we're going to start making new territories or states like Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Territory of Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, um, Alabama, Mississippi. And uh, so they start organizing this area and it, it, it really does avert a really big problem. So that is a very huge success of the Articles of Confederation. So that was a really good thing. Now, it's not to say that they, it didn't have its problems. It had five major weaknesses. Um, first, it was a weak national government. This was by design. They didn't want a king. They didn't want um, people telling them what to do. Uh, so they made sure that the, the states had control of everything. The, the federal government could come together, make decisions, but it really was up to the states to um, to implement what the National Congress was going to do. So, um, yeah, so it, it just could not do very much. And one of the reasons why it couldn't do very much is because it was a weak Congress, okay? They only had the legislative body, and so they vote on something, but they couldn't collect taxes. They couldn't print money. Well, we'll get to the printing money, but they couldn't collect taxes. So if you don't have money, how can you do anything? Imagine going to the mall and... Yeah, you don't have any money. What, what are you going to be able to do? You just walk around and, and look at things, and, and that's about it. You can't really accomplish anything. Um, you could not control commerce. Commerce it has to do with trade. So if uh, New York and New Jersey wanted to trade and there was a dispute, Congress couldn't do anything about it. It was, between, it was really up to the states, and, and so the states would get on each other's cases. And, hey, you're cheating me on this. and No, we're not, and whatever. So... Uh, Congress really couldn't do very much about it. Number three, no national currency. This is the other thing with money. They, the um, Congress could not print money. The dollars that you have in your wallet um, would be issued by the state. So imagine if you uh, went to the mall across the border and you had to exchange your money to that state's money. And then when you come back, you had to go back to an exchange and get your state's money uh, so that you can go to a local store. It, it would be very confusing, very annoying, um, and it wouldn't be the same um, switch over. So for instance, let's say you live in New York and you go to New Jersey and New Jersey's dollars are, are not worth that much. So you go there with your New York dollar and you exchange it for three New Jersey dollars and, you know, it sounds like you're getting more money, but you're, you know, you really can't, so it's uh, it gets confusing, and then it would fluctuate. You know, next time you go over there, you you get five dollars, the New Jersey dollars for one New York dollar because the economies are doing. It gets very complicated, and it's very confusing. And you know, what if one state doesn't want to accept? Maybe uh, Virginia doesn't want to accept North Carolina dollars. No, that's not good here. You gotta you you know that we're not going to exchange it. We think it's worth less, and and then you get more disputes. So that there's a lot of arguments that are popping up because of these weaknesses in the government. One, one of the biggest arguments is the one state, one vote. Rhode Island, very small state. Delaware, another small state, would have the same power as a huge state like Virginia. Virginia was very big back then, and they did not have the same power as these smaller states. They, they felt, hey, we got more people, so we should have more power. And so this created another argument. This is another big sticking issue of trying to get uh, the country together. And then finally, no executive and judicial branches. There, there's nobody to make sure that everybody carries out the law. So imagine if you know, we have a law, you can't run a red light. Well, if there's no police and no courts, then and people start running the red lights, who's going to stop them? You know, I mean, obviously another car crashing into is going to stop them, but I mean, people are going to break the law if there's nobody that's going to enforce it. You know, you just find every bad person out there. It's going to happen. So it, it was a really big problem. Even if they said this is a law, the states could just ignore them. And um, this was a big, big problem. So they realized they cannot continue with the Articles Confederation as it is. They have two choices. They can get 
rid of the Articles of Confederation and get a new government, or they can try to fix the Articles of, Con of Confederation, try to make it work a little bit better. Uh, they decide on the, the first thing. They decide to scrap the Articles of Confederation in 1787 and have a constitutional convention. Now, what you do need to remember about the constitutional convention is that George Washington is elected as president of the constitutional convention. So before he becomes president of the United States, he's the president of the constitutional convention. Uh, so he's commander in chief of the army during the Revolutionary War. He retires after the war, and then they bring him back to be president of the constitutional convention to preside over uh, what's going to happen there. Uh, basically, someone who presides says, okay, it's your turn to talk. Okay, uh, so-and-so wants to speak. Hold on a second. Let him finish. Okay, now it's your turn to talk. And they felt that he would be a good, calming, and commanding presence as someone who would be fair to everybody. So that's why he was uh, elected. So uh, George Washington is the president of the Constitutional Convention at this part of our story. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, well, we'll start moving into what happens with the Constitutional Convention, but uh, the Articles Confederation, two uh, successes, was the Revolution and organizing the Northwest Territories, uh, five weaknesses, weak national government, weak Congress, no national currency, one state, one vote, no executive or judicial branches. And then finally, we go into the Constitutional Convention, George Washington, was elected president of the Constitutional Convention. I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.